I feel a little bit like Lady Gaga with this mic, so it's exciting to, <laughs> to be here. Um, thank you again all. I'm, I'm really excited. And to, and to echo what Linda said, this is such an incredible time to be interested in pursuing science, technology, engineering, and math. We're in a country where we have a minister of innovation who's investing you know, millions of dollars into this. We have a minister of science, a female minister of science, who's focusing on encouraging women and girls to pursue science. That's Kirsty Duncan. Um, this is, this is an incredible time, an incredible country, um, an opportunity to be in. We're also in a, an interesting time where the future is, is unknown, um, but that's such a huge opportunity to start to craft what it is that you want to do, the mark that you want to make in, in this world. It's an opportunity to uh, hack your future. Get my slides going on here. Um, so I'm on social media. We love social media at Ladies Learning Code, so feel free to, to tweet at us or at me while, while I'm, I'm chatting. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about kind of my journey. So what I'm really hoping to share here today is, is how I've done this, how I've hacked you know, my, my career and, and, and this future, and, and how I've used technology, um, coding, and some of these other principles to put together something, um, and share these lessons as a way for you to start thinking about, about what a future in, in STEM might look like for you as well. So Ladies Learning Code, it all started with a tweet. Funny enough, that's why we love social media. Um, but just under six years ago, there were women, four of us, myself included, who wanted to learn to code. Um, and we, we couldn't really find any opportunities in Toronto to do so. And so we, we made them. Um, we got a group together. There was about 80 of us. Um, you know, we thought it would be about 20, but it ended up being about 80 of us uh, in Toronto in July 2011. And we started to think about what learning to code might look like. Um, and so a month later, we launched our first workshop, uh, Intro to JavaScript, and we sold out in about, I think it was a day. The second workshop, a month later, sold out in seven minutes, and then the month after that, it was 30 seconds. So, you know, I, I tell the joke, it was harder to get a, a ticket to a workshop than to a Beyonce concert. Um, just true. Uh, and, and so, you know, huge, huge demand and momentum. Well, when we started, we didn't actually even realize that there was I mean, an underrepresentation of, of women in tech, per se. Um, but as we got going, we started to realize, hey, you know, women aren't represented in this industry as they should. Um, if technology is everywhere, if it's our future, um, you know, we need the technology that we're using to be built by a group that is representative of the one using it. Um, so a year into Ladies Learning Code, we launched Girls Learning Code which is programs for young girls. Uh, and then we had parents who have young girls and young boys come to us and say, okay, where, where are the programs for my sons? Uh, and so we launched Kids Learning Code. And then we had this interesting thing where teachers started sneaking into our programs uh, to teach their kids and their students. And so we launched Teachers Learning Code. And then, this is evolving, we, we own Babies Learning Code also. Um, uh, and then, you know, last, last fall, we, we realized, okay, we've built this community six years, we're in 30 cities across the country, um, how can we bring what we're doing here for women and youth educators to all of Canada? And so we launched Canada Learning Code, which is our goal to teach 10 million Canadians how to code over the next 10 years. And what we want to do is to give people these underlying basic skills so that they can build and not, and not just consume the technology around them. I'll take a moment and I'll zoom out. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you how I got here um, and this really unique opportunity. So that's me and my two friends. Um, my, my family, I got our first family computer in the mid-90s. And for me, this changed everything. Um, I loved building, I was always doing arts and crafts, but as soon as we got the computer, I could instantly create anything. Um, so I was using Corel Draw at the time to make a newsletter for my street. Uh, I taught myself to code. Um, at that time, the, the web is, looks very different now. I was learning HTML, but CSS didn't even exist at the time. So I was making websites. And I was creating websites for my friends. Um, we were creating these like guest books where you could chat. And so I spent two whole summers doing nothing but just coding. Um, and you know, it created so much opportunity for me and, and it was just a, t a ton of fun. Um, and so I went on to take computer science in grade nine. I did really well. I think I got the top mark, but it's hard to know. Uh, but that was it. I was fortunate enough that I went to a school where computer science was offered all the way up to grade 12. 
even to this day, um, that does, that's not the case. Um, but I wasn't encouraged to pursue it. You know, my, my teacher at the time was like, okay, this is great, Melissa, like, you know, good job. Like, you know, go on your merry way. Um, and so that was the end of the formal computer science education for me. Um, it stopped there. But my talk's not done, so there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So for me, what ended up happening next is this. This is my career path, um, really windy. I'm not a, an artist, but. Um, and so I went on to business school. I went on to business school where you do one of four things, which is accounting, finance, consulting, and marketing if you're lucky. Um, and so, you know, I did what I was supposed to do, and I, I picked one of the four. I went into accounting, um, and I didn't like it. Uh, and, but, you know, it was my first interview that I got, the first job offer that I got. I did well on my first test, and so it just seemed like that was going to be what I was going to do. And so I went into accounting. Um, I, went, I graduated university, went on to study accounting. I really didn't like it. Um, I really didn't like it at all. I still don't really like it, um, although it's more important now than you'd, you'd imagine. Um, and so I started to think about, like, what it is that I wanted to do. And I had a really, really important, meaningful conversation with one of my friends. He was starting this coaching practice. So this exercise that I'm going to walk you through um, comes from that. Um, but for me, this was the second game changer in my life, complete game changer. And so the first kind of lesson that I learned was really starting to uncover what drives you. So I'm going to encourage you all, you can keep your eyes open or you can close them, but just take a quick second or a couple seconds to think about a moment where you were happiest. Like, what is that first thing that comes to your mind? This is the exercise that I did, really simple, and I scribbled some stuff down on the back of, like, some real estate flyer that was in the coffee shop that we were at. Um, but for me, what came out was this example that in grade seven, when I started a school store. So I started a school store to sell kernels, dill pickle pickled popcorn for 50 cents, um, and I resold Costco chips for like 75 cents. Um, they were the big bags. Uh, but for me, like that is, even to this day, the most happy that I've ever felt. That comes instantly to mind. And so for me, like I did a lot more digging around this and starting to think about what it was about that that made me happy. Um, I love chips, but it was more, <laughs> really do, um, but it was more about creating opportunity for people. So for me, I love that my friends got to have like these chips at lunch, and, and, and for me and some of my really close friends, I love that we didn't have to go for recess anymore because I hated going out, and I wasn't athletic, and I, I didn't like the cold. So I created this opportunity for us to do something really meaningful for, for our community through this. Um, so that's my first lesson, is thinking about what it is that makes you super happy. And then all of the decisions after are going to be super easy, as I, I share with you today. Um, so, you know, maybe the first thing that came to mind for you was soccer. Like, you loved that soccer game that you won. Um, and so maybe you love being outdoors, and that's something that you need to pursue. Or maybe what made you feel super happy was the fact that you won being part of a team. And if that's the case, you probably shouldn't apply for jobs or look for work where you're alone in the lab all the time. Or maybe if you do, that's a small part and there's some other way that you're going to be able to, you know, find that thing that makes you happy. And so then that's really what makes all the future decisions super easy. So this happened and I realized, okay, accounting is not checking any of these boxes for me right now. Um, so I decided to quit. I went into the partner's office at Deloitte, which is the accounting firm that I was working at, and I said, I'm done, thank you, I'll ride out you know, as much of the busy season as you need, but I, I, need, to, I need to leave, this is not for me. Um, which is a tough decision, and, and so many people um, you know, were like, what are you doing? Even the boss, um, my, my partner said, if you're my daughter, I never let you do that. Um, you, you're like, what are you gonna do next? Um, and so that was the next lesson for me, is that people may underestimate you in your career and some of your choices, but never underestimate yourself. And I think if you can figure out what makes you happy, it'll give you that confidence to keep pushing forward towards whatever it is that you want to do. Another thing that came up in this kind of co conversation of quitting, and, and then after that I took a few other jobs, and I, I've done a bunch of stuff since, but it was this idea that you know, what are people going to say if you like did accounting for six months and then you did something else and then you jumped somewhere else? And there's this piece around like the right path. Um, and that really frustrates me because I don't think there's any right way of doing your life um, and your career. And I actually think the interesting piece is that each and every one of you have this unique narrative that you're creating. 
So for me, after accounting, I went into um, purchasing at Canadian Tire for a period of time. I was you know, working with the, they have this really complex dealer model like where their stores are owned by, by kind of like franchisees. And then I went into work at Freshie. I don't know if you guys know Freshie, the healthy food, fast food concept based out of Canada here. Um, and I was doing franchise expansion. And so if you think about that winding path, like those things make, like there's very little continuity there. Like they're all just kind of weird roles. But then fast forward to Ladies Learning Code and a year in, we wanted to take our programs around the country. And so who would have thought at that time, all of these jumps that I made would have given me the experience to, in franchising and community building and virtual teams to start to grow our community at Ladies Learning Code. Another example is Nat, who's our creative director at Ladies Learning Code. She's a background in theater production. She's taught herself design. Um, and then she's also taken some programs and learned to code. Um, and so she became, her narrative was the actual perfect combination for creating one of our coolest projects yet, which was the Codemobile. And so this Codemobile, I should have put a picture up, but it dro drove across the country last summer teaching kids to code. And so it was this physical experience, it was this like digital experience, and so her like windy narrative was like the perfect, she was the perfect person to create something like that and make that happen. So super important to recognize there is no right way of doing things. Own, you know, your, your, what drives you and create a narrative that's unique to you and that's what's gonna fuel you forward. And then recognize that STEM is every career. So, and it's gonna be invaluable to whatever you do. So for me, although I didn't pursue, you know, computer science right after, after um, grade eight, I guess, or grade nine, um, I, I was coding all the time. I was taking on projects that were technical at any of the companies that I were, was at. Um, I was, you know, had an affinity towards that, and it really helped me take on and move the needle on the things that I was doing. It gave me, more importantly than the, the practical tactical skills, it gave me confidence. So I have this saying of, of you know, you can kind of muscle anything, is the saying, um, but it, that, that's true. So when we were thinking about ladies learning code and growing and, and what was next, there's so much fear around that. Um, taking that jump, you know, having, you know, leaving a job and not knowing what you're doing, but having the confidence and knowing you have this tool set through, through STEM that you could you know, build a website if you needed to or design that poster if you needed more registrations, like having that as a skill set regardless of what you do is so critical, so invaluable, and it's something that is going to serve you well for the, the rest of your, of your life. I think this is a big one, secrets out, and I know I'm being filmed, so all of my friends and tech leaders are gonna, gonna be calling me after this, but it's true, you know, like, no, it may seem like, you know, there are all of us up here, you know, in our careers doing things and we've got it all together. Uh, truth is, we're all figuring this stuff out as well. Um, and there's, you know, there's no real way of doing it. No one really knows what they're doing. Um, but what's important is that you recognize that, um, that you ask for help early on. You'd be surprised how helpful <laughs> People are, um, especially in the STEM community. I think it's one of my favorite parts of being in, in the tech community in Canada is that it's incredibly collaborative. So you ask for help. That's not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of, of strength. Um, always be learning. That's absolutely critical. Staying humble in what you do. Asking for feedback, even when it's maybe going to be negative, really, really important. That's what's going to push you and grow you in, in whatever it is that you decide to do. And this is another important lesson. So at Laser and Code, I mean, we've had so much traction and so much success, and that's what people see. Um, but every day, especially in my role as a CEO, I'm constantly trying to remove obstacles and barriers for my team so that they can do their best work. I'm constantly being thrown at all these like negative curveballs, right? Uh, a grant that we didn't get, funding that didn't fall through, you know, like a team issue, whatever it might be. Um, in your career, same thing, like these, these roadblocks, you know, for me at accounting, quitting my job, not having a plan, figuring out how to pay rent, all of this like negative criticism, it's so easy to be focusing on that, and I think Linda mentioned that too, it's so easy to tune into that frequency. Don't turn into that frequency. Recognize that your career and that your life is a long, long game. And that, you know, for us in, in trying to move the needle in education, I expect it's gonna take my life time to, to make the impact that we want in a big institution and a big system that, that exists in this country. But I think what's important is that, you know, recognizing you know, what are those quick wins within 
your life, within your career, within the work that you do that can keep you moving forward. Uh, so for me, going back to d my passion and what drives me, which is creating opportunities for other people, looking to my scribbles on that real estate note, um, I keep that at the forefront of everything I do. So for me, when things are getting rough um, or you know, funding doesn't come through, I put myself in those situations, those quick win situations, where I see the impact of what we're doing. So for me, it's being at our programs. I go to our workshops like, as much as I can, um, and I definitely go every month, because for me, seeing a woman or a young girl be empowered and inspired with technology, seeing them see themselves in a different light, for me, that's creating opportunity for people. And that's the piece that drives me forward day after day after day. So I think that's another important lesson in, in what I've learned, and I hope you learn much earlier on, is like identifying for you what those quick wins are in your life, whatever it might be, um, and, and making sure that you have those through, through your day-to-day. -day. And then the last thing is, is, I think, the most important piece about you know, all of us being here to get today as young women in STEM and pursuing careers in this space. It is so, so critical that we help one another. It's so critical that we collaborate together. It's critical that we celebrate one another. I think as women, it's so you know, easy for us to be competitive, especially in an industry where there are not a lot of women yet. That's changing because all of you are, are here today. Um, but I, I think it's so critical. It's how I live my life. It's how we run Ladies Learning Code. You know, the tech community in Canada especially, have you heard of that concept of open source? Um, the tech community, this is something I've, I've leveraged from there. They get it. They get that by putting your work out there, that when people can collaborate, it raises the bar for everybody. So that's the, the most important piece, if nothing else, and of what I shared today, is that rise, we all rise by lifting others. And so I'm super excited to see what you all do with a career in STEM. Know that it's going to take you wherever you need it to take you. Know that you can craft your own nar narrative, and that's critical. And that each and every one of you are going to make your own unique mark on Canada, and I'm super excited to see that happen. So thank you.